<laughs> all right there hello 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 to you all this is Dennis and this is the October tape and it is a joy to be here with you um, the joy comes I guess from the feelings within my heart that I get back from all of you as you listen to the tapes and and grow and and touch the divinity that you are and it, accelerate that godness that that lies within you and and I guess there are those times when I just really get filled with the with the joy of giving um, and the sharing of of my feelings and my knowledge and the knowingness and all those things that you know um, grow within me ah and to know that you are really turning into God is such is such a nice feeling without a pump for me. Um, because every time you do, it's, it's like a twinkle. There's like a star is born and, and, and there is light and there is energy and there's kind of like a smile that goes across your face. And there's, um, there's a knowingness that there are these things that are they're happening, these things are going on. Um, there are several things that I can talk about on this tape, and uh, one of them is is angels. It's sort of a field that I haven't really tapped before. It's a field that um, I'm getting ready to open up. It's a field of feeling for me more than anything on books. My knowledge of angels is basically. Um, knowledge that I have gained with inside of myself that I have gained by listening to um, my teachers and especially listening to one of my favorite teachers um, Claudine Limley and I'll mention her name from time to time and just to acknowledge her as that being as that teacher because she um, has made a transition over and I want to acknowledge her and all that she has given to this planet, uh, all that she has given to me, all that I can give to the planet. And there's that feeling of joy, of giving, that comes over me when I, uh, I think of her. Because she was such a true giver all the time. I guess sometimes we don't really see these things until these people are gone. And we, and we see the qualities and the virtues the joy that they they really did share one of the gifts that she shared with me uh, was angels it was the angelic kingdom uh, she was a true being of joyfulness in terms of her angels they were her companions they were her insights they were the things of which she felt were the messengers that communicated her love to different masters on the planet where she put her energy where she put her devotion where she placed her her knowingness of attentions see as each of us grow and each of us share we begin to notice that we will put our attention somewhere on something and each as teachers eventually picks a specific thing. I, as a teacher, specifically picked God. Um, not that anything is greater than or less than, so don't get into that. We pick what we're strongest in. And if one field sounds better than another, don't get caught by that because you're all God. You know, don't get caught by, well, this is my field, and because you're branching out in other fields, don't get hung up. Nothing is greater than or less than. Period. All is the same. Now, she chose angels because she could honor her godness and her divinity by having these messengers carry sounds and voices and feelings and knowingness. And this, then, is one of the forms of angelicness that I would like to share with you along with others along with the others I've noticed that the Indians have the elements 
And to tell you the truth, there is somewhat of an inbreeding. These are somewhat sort of like all the major spirits or all the major angels, and yet perceived from different groupings in different ways. Claudine sees them as angels of light. I, as a being of the Catholicism, see them as messengers of God, as profound beings that have the ability to go through different dimensions. The Buddhists have them as different servers of different gods. The messengers that carry the knowingness, that have power. Sometimes they're dragons that guard the heaven worlds. The dragons that we see sometimes in the different religions of the Far East. I don't choose to call them Buddhas or um, Hindus or all of the different names that we have because they become sometimes complicated. But I want to mention all of them because they are different messengers for different deities, guiding aspects for physical forms, and they seem to project through all different aspects of dimensions their qualities of knowing. I was just sort of clearing my throat there. Thank you. These angelic beings can be seen in many forms, like I had mentioned. Let's take one general form. Let's kind of, you know, hone it down in there. Let's acknowledge that the Egyptians had their forms of spirits also. They had angel beings. Their gods wore wings in different formats. They had their messengers of the gods. Rome had its messengers to the gods. And, and so the angels in their forms can be traced back. The Atlanteans had their messengers, their, their beings. Adam and Eve had their sons and daughters of God, messengers, spirits. Spirit beings that sometimes are not in form, seem to wing as in spirit might suggest some form of spirit yet spirit still suggests some sort of form that perhaps some of us can see perhaps some of us cannot perhaps some of us can feel maybe some of us cannot maybe some of us can sense and maybe some of us cannot because we perceive through seeing or hearing or touched or smell all these different aspects of spirit or angel or essence or knowing because I want to take in everything that there is so that we get a complete conglomerate of what I want to talk about today in terms of angels there are angels painted through the Renaissance that have wings there are angels in metaphysical aspects that are by vibrations, our colors. The rainbow is a form of angelic essence. Like I said, the wind, the earth, the fire is a form of, of spirit, of angel. And so as you see, as we get ready to talk about this, there are lots of, lots of avenues here. And as many avenues as we have for, say, the different religions or, or the different sects, not S-E-X, but uh, sects, S-E-C-T-S, creeds, religions, down into South Africa where they had their spirits that they can see coming and going in, in forms of perhaps ectoplasm or they dance and chant like the Sufis bringing up those spirits. 
spirits of the dead, spirits of the living, voodoo spirits, angels in voodoo, angels in black magic, devils, holy angels, plus and minus angels. All those things which we conjure up in our mind. The boogeyman is a spirit, and yet it was real and it took place in all of us as children. There are all of these avenues that we can call angels. So let's take a general look at all of these things now. Because we are in duality, let's take a look at it from plus and minus. The angelic kingdom. We had heard there are the fallen angels. We heard there are angels that serve what some would call to be negative gods. Or gods that are so powerful where life and death, the changing of time and space is so insignificant. So let us look at plus angels and minus angels. Because after all there is duality. Let us not see them from our judgments. Let us perceive them from our divinity, from our clean state of consciousness as God. Let us stretch our safe ourselves during this tape and totally perceive ourselves as God, leaving all judgments to the side. Let us look at the angelic kingdom in its duality of plus and minus from the perfection of God. Clean and simple. You are now God, looking and listening, perceiving, touching, tasting and sensing this tape. in front of you for your understanding and gratification as God. Picture two angelic being beings. And for the sake of duality, make them any color that you want. Now know as God they are both going to do the bidding of whatever people or the planet want. And as God, you are not here to choose or to judge or to evaluate because both angels are on their way of doing what they need to do. On one side, let's just say that the angels need to keep the pollution rolling and going. They need to keep criticism rolling and going. They need to keep the wheels of negativity rolling and churning so that the states of omnipresence will be coming around soon and man and kingdoms can see what it has created for itself so that it can learn what free will is what the choices are and see the manifestation of the end result on the other side you've got a white angel or whatever colors you've chosen to make it it's out there creating joy creating peace creating understanding so that those individuals that this angel affects begin to tune with inside of themselves so that their service to the planet is of joy and peace and a sharing and to helping in the plants and the growth and the caring in the evolution. Bring both angels back. Let's check in. They're doing their job really well. Let's thank them because they are both keeping the balance of nature flowing towards the divine state of omnipresence 
at which time you can clearly see because you are God. You are having no judgments on the pollution because you are having no judgments on the plants cluttering up and taking up space and breathing and putting out oxygen and carbon monoxide also. There is a balance that is perfect. Now that the universe is flowing and rolling and everything is pretty well taking care of itself, I got an angel at both ends of the planet. You have an angel at both ends of the planet. They're called poles, magnetic poles. They are keeping duality turning. Fortunately for you and them, they have no opinions. The North Pole is neither positive or negative. The South Pole is neither positive or negative in terms of concepts. In terms of poles and poles and attractions and magnetisms, they are, however, both working together simultaneously to keep the world spinning and in perfect balance. So we have these angels doing their job. We have archangels doing their jobs. <clears throat> we have messengers going back and forth between the physical plane, the emotional plane, the divine plane, the spirit plane all doing their job perfectly in harmony to what every human being on the planet wishes. And you as God have given them the free will to choose whether they wish positive or negative. And as God, you don't really care because it's all perfect. You as the divine being of the creation of all of this are capable in your limitless magnification, magnitude of divinity, are capable of perceiving that both sides are required to evolve into a cleaner, more divine-like state. As you observe down there, you notice that you have created yourself by the name of. This is where you fill in the blank using your name. However, you can still observe everything that is going on. As a physical personality, now manifesting godness. First angel that we are to look at or the thing that we will call or make reference to as an angel will be our guardian angel. Our guardian angel. Seeing as how it is the closest thing to us, it is the one that we may have heard about more than any of the other ones. Probably everybody's got some point of reference of it, so here's where we're going to start. On the physical plane. We've already started as God, noticing that there are positive and negative angels all doing God's wishes, which is yours. Now we're taking our guardian angel. Our guardian angel, what does it do? How does it work? It guards us. It protects us. It serves us. It has the ability to come and go, changing of the guard, so to speak. That's why guardian angels, I believe, come and go, have specific jobs, do them very well. I feel they come and go with every seven years, sort of like the coming and going of our cellular material. I think as they come and go, they are also replaced by evolving angels as we evolve. I think that we gain more than just the one. As we begin to realize that we are in some way, shape, and form an essence that is more than just the personality that we see ourselves as, namely using your name, <laughs> is that personality. Basically now in our life we are gaining masses of angels because of our devotion to ourself, ourself being the aspect of God. Pulling ourselves into these divine avenues and recognizing these divine avenues within ourselves increases the light which is around us, which increases the flow of attraction of the angelic kingdom. 
The angelic kingdom, per se, is to serve. Right or wrong is immaterial. It serves the divine will, which you must see by now is duality. Our personal self is learning through its personal will that we are also divine, and by stepping into our divinity, beginning to understand that we have a clearer understanding of the physical reality which we're working in, and that we are able to make cleaner, clearer decisions based on the amount of light that we're beginning to see around us and perceive within us. The angelic kingdom, which is excited to see our growth because we are manifesting God, which the angels are designed to serve, therefore then come into our field and begin to serve us with more insight, more levity, more light. As I talk about, you notice how all of a sudden you just get things, you kind of think something, and all of a sudden you turn around and there it is. These are angels serving us getting to us those things that we are asking for because in some of these moments that we are asking you will begin to notice that you are in a clear state of awareness you are in present time you are aware somewhat that you have just asked it grinned and thought <laughs> and there it is the angelic kingdom due to its light and wishes of serving you is making a bridge and a gap through to you so that you can begin to recognize these different things in you. We are beginning to bring other dimensions and planes, our multidimensional self, into the physical reality and we're beginning to perceive these things in new ways. The angelic kingdom, or basically a vibration of divine clarity, begins to basically become more frequent in our energy as we begin to want our development to become divine-like. As this manifests within us, all angelic beings come towards us, dark and white, because you must realize that all f sources of angels are not into judgment. They are merely serving the divinity. If we, as a personality, quit judging ourselves, we will begin to notice the divine way in which the white and black angels can serve us our lessons lovingly. Instead of judging something as right or wrong, we perceive it as a learning experience which therefore allows us to not judge the angels that are presenting to us the picture that we need to grow and learn from. By doing this, we are capable of evolving the angelic force plus or minus into glorifying it into the state that it is serving the creator thus enhancing the divinity in us to make less judgment on the presentation of time and space that we are be we are being given the angels then, plus and minus, because it's duality, then present more of a, an excitement and a joy as they serve to us our lessons as we from the personal self enjoy them by having fun in our life and not judging the way that the lessons are being presented to us. It is easier then to have joy in the understanding of the lesson rather than antagonism and negative disposition which will say one side of duality normally will give you. However, by a non-judgment at by a non-judgment stand which we make as we begin to see our divinity 
we will begin to see that that which we have called the black or negative force also has the ability, when we are not judging it, to give back to us the light truth of simplicity, of non-judgment, of the divinity that this angel that we have chosen to see as dark is really capable of giving us like joy because we don't choose to judge it. And then we begin to see that the dark and white isn't really a force. And as we begin to see that, we begin to realize that we, as a personality and as God, are lifting our perceptions of our self and our divinity into more of a limitless state and capable of realizing that we are stepping out of judgment as we begin to perceive ourselves truly as God. This then is the beginning of understanding just the touch of the angelic kingdom that begins to bring itself into our understanding into our realm of knowingness. Two angels, plus and minus, duality, making form that is in front of us. Our guardian, guardian angel, standing there showing us how to stay light within the evaluation of the other two angels that we have seen as that which is our evaluation in right and wrong to learn a lesson. Okay, let's take a deep breather on this one. I see that I'm running out of tape on this side. And we'll um, shoot on over to the other side where we can get right into the, um, the angelic kingdom. Thank you.